Hello internet users and welcome back to another insanity filled adventure. After what happened last time in Kanto, I think this topic needs little introduction. We're going to jump into Pokemon Crystal version and see if we can go from start to finish, using only a single ditto to overcome every battle. Before that though, here's a brief rundown of what I'll be doing, and any extra info you need to know. I will not be using any items in the middle of battle, and any necessary HM users will be left fainted in the party, so that the opponent cannot force a switch and reset Ditto's transform. As well, in order for me to be able to do this challenge, I've edited the selected starter Pokémon to be a level 5 Ditto instead of a Totodile. Going into Generation 2, Ditto more or less still functions exactly the same as the previous games. Using Transform will copy all of the target's stats and known moves, with the only exception being hit points. As well, the PP for all known moves is set to 5 once transformed. So when using Transform, it will have to rely on the strength of the enemy in front of it to succeed. The move Transform has of course received some tweaks in the sequel though, most of which are related to fixing some glitches that the move could cause. And after what happened in the last video, I can say that I'm very relieved to hear that. Other than that, the only notable change is that you can't transform into a target that is in the air from using Fly, or is underground from using Dig. And with all that out of the way, let's begin the long-awaited challenge. The start of the game is pretty straightforward. It's mainly just low-level Pokémon tackling each other until one of them faints. Having a ditto for this part makes very little difference. However, while running Professor Elm's errand, I make sure to pick up some berries along the way. You guys know how I hate spamming things like full restores to win battles, but now that held items have been added in Gen 2, I'm going to be making use of the small benefits that they can give me. Now I arrive at the first real battle of the game. There isn't anything to work with other than Tackle and Growl, so I make sure to give Ditto a berry beforehand to pretty much guarantee victory. When Ditto's health is low, it will restore 10 HP. It doesn't matter if you win or lose this fight, but I still wanted the EXP for doing so anyway. After returning to New Bark Town, I can officially head out and begin my quest to collect all of the gym badges. By the way, you may have noticed that it's now daytime. Contrary to popular belief, I don't just have 12 hours set aside every day to do stuff like this, and can sometimes only do a little bit at a time when I can, so you can probably expect to see the footage jump around between day and night throughout the course of this video. Returning to Route 30, I need to get past all of the trainers here to get to Violet City. Before attempting to get the first badge, I think it would be best to level up at Sprout Tower first. However, all of the trainers there have nothing but bell sprouts that just know Vine Whip. And as I'm sure you can imagine, that would make for some annoying and slow battles when using Transform. So I decide to go back to Route 30, waste all of Transform's PP on wild Pokémon, and hit them with Struggle instead. I did something similar in the last video, but this time around, Struggle has also undergone a few changes for this generation. In Gen 1, the recoil damage was equal to half of the damage that was inflicted to the opponent. But now in Gen 2, it is only a fourth. As well, it is no longer affected by typing, so even though it is a normal move, it can hit Ghost Pokémon. However, Ditto will not be given the same type attack bonus when using it. When the time comes to take on Faulkner, I go in with the same strategy for a few reasons. His first Pokémon is a Pidgey that knows Tackle and Mud Slap. With his Pidgey stats, it'd be pretty annoying to take down his team with only 5 tackles, and because the other move is Ground-type, it would not affect his Pokémon, and he would get 5 free turns to attack me before I could strike back again with Struggle. I also gave Ditto a Berry, just in case. This battle is certainly doable by transforming into his Pidgey, but because of Mudslap being one of its moves, you really need to grind to have the HP to last through the fight. As you can probably tell, when it comes to Gen 2 in particular, using the struggle strategy is a lot more viable in this game. On top of being a generation where the recoil damage is small, Johto is known to start with very low-leveled opponents in comparison to other generations. And when you consider that opponents often start with their weakest Pokémon, Transform hardly gets a chance to shine at this point. Now that the battle with Faulkner is over with, I proceed south to continue the journey. Along the way, this guy here gives me a Miracle Seed, a hold item that ups the power of grass moves. Throughout this playthrough, I'm going to try and collect as many of these kinds of hold items that I can. As I'm sure you can imagine, if I know what kind of moves my transform target is going to have in a battle, it might be useful to give my ditto one of these beforehand. 
It should be noted though that in the older games, items like the Miracle Seed only give a 10% boost in power, unlike the later games which give a 20% boost. And on the subject of held items, there is one more oddity I want to address, because I know people will bring it up if I don't. Throughout the game, there are items that grant certain effects to specific Pokémon. Take for example, the Light Ball, an item that doubles a Pikachu's attack power. If I were to go into a battle with my Ditto holding a Light Ball, and then transformed into a Pikachu, the game would still recognize my Pokémon species as a Ditto, and would not grant it the power boost. The same applies for other items such as the Thick Club for Marowak and Cubone, and the Stick for Farfetch'd. Anyways, Route 32 and Union Cave aren't anything special. They're filled with a whole lot of trainer fights, but none of them pose any threat, and even if they did, you can walk around most of them anyway. But even so, I took the time to defeat them all anyway, since I want to keep Ditto's level as high as I can. When arriving in Azalea Town, before I can attempt to get the second badge, I need to get rid of the Team Rocket Grunts inside the Slowpoke Well. The final Grunt just has a single coughing with two poison moves and tackle. Assuming you don't get any bad damage rolls, he isn't hard to take care of with five tackles. With that out of the way, the battle against Bugsy is next. Out of all the battles in the game, Bugsy is an example of where you absolutely do not want to use Transform. His first Pokémon is a Metapod with three moves. There is no way to bring it down with your limited amount of tackles, so you have to spend ten turns using the other moves before you can use Struggle. You might think that the use of Harden five times is at least one benefit, but it's actually not. His second Pokémon, Kakuna, can only use Harden in Poison Sting. Even with the use of the Poison Cure Berry, my HP is sure to be whittled down enough for his Scyther to finish me off once it comes out. So once again, struggling with Ditto is the way to go. Right after I'm done with the gym, I have to defeat my rival for the second time. In this fight, he leads with a Ghastly that likes to put you to sleep and use Spite to drain your PP. So whether I'm transformed or not, I have to rely on Struggle anyway, so I let Ditto be itself for this one too. However, as I get further in the game, the Pokémon are getting bulkier, and the team sizes are starting to get bigger. If I didn't get lucky with avoiding his Zubat Supersonic and prepare to deal with his Bayleaf's Poison Powder, this battle could have gone either way even though I'm clearly overleveled. And now before I make my way to Goldenrod City, I need to do something else first. You see, at this time I realized I was playing the game on a Monday, and there is a helpful item that is obtained from a character that only appears on a Tuesday. So to make things easier for myself, I went all the way back to Route 29 and saved, so I could turn the game on tomorrow and pick it up. The item I'm talking about is the Pink Bow, which increases the power of the holder's normal type attacks by 10%, something that will no doubt come in handy for the third gym, which specializes in that very type. This is also good due to the fact that many Pokémon usually have a normal type move such as Tackle and Scratch or Pound on them anyway. In hindsight, I probably should have just started the game on a Tuesday, so I could have gotten the bow as soon as possible. But now that that's all taken care of, it's time to head to Goldenrod City. The first thing I do here is head to the underground to pick up a coin case. Next, I purchase a few coins in order to exchange for an Abra. Why do I want an Abra? Well, at the top of the Goldenrod department store, there is a man who is looking for one and is willing to trade him a chop for it. The reason I do this in-game trade is because of the item the Machop is holding, a gold berry. The gold berry is a held item that restores 30 HP when a Pokémon's health is low. I'm saving this item for a little later. Aside from this Machop, the only other way to get a gold berry this early in the game is to win it as a prize at the bug catching contest. But since the contest is only held twice a week, and the berry is the prize for third place, this is obviously a much more unreliable way to obtain one. As well, I'm going to eventually need an HM user for strength anyway, so two birds, one stone. Going to Whitney's gym, I find what is one of the more unique fights for the Ditto Challenge. Her first Pokémon is Clefairy, which knows Encore, Mimic, Double Slap, and Metronome. Thanks to the Pink Bow and Clefairy's typing, I have no trouble taking it down. For her infamous Mill Tank, I know that it's not going to go down easy, so I leave it all up to Metronome. For my first Metronome, I got Glare, which paralyzed Mill Tank. Next was Rolling Kick, a fighting type move. After that, I somehow got Karate Chop, which also landed a critical hit. On the fourth Metronome, I got Quick Attack, which was slightly boosted by the Pink Bow. And after all that unbelievable luck, instead of doing the safer option of finishing it off with Double Slap, I for some reason put everything into my final metronome, which came out to be Rollout. 
In that moment, I thought I was about to knock out Whitney's mill tank using the very move that has caused a lot of people grief. Except it didn't kill, and I got finished off instead. I made a few more attempts. No matter what, mill tank always goes for rollout. So I have to hope that metronome gives me something that can disrupt the move before it gains power. Luckily, on my final attempt, I managed to get minimize and also confuse mill tank with swagger. So I'm sure many of you get the point by now. Even with a ditto, all of the NPC trainers, especially in Johto, are kind of a joke. So we're pretty much just going to be glossing over them and skipping to the more important parts of this run. I highly doubt any of you came here to see me say, and then I used tackle on this guy's ratata for 30 minutes. The next place I'm going to head is Ecritique City, where I have to complete both the third rival encounter and the fourth gym leader, Morty. However, for now, I'm going to ignore the two of them and first go as far as I possibly can, defeating all of the trainers that are available at this point in the game. Morty's badge is the one that allows you to use Surf, so I can only put him off for so long. And in order to enter his gym, my rival must first be defeated at the Burn Tower. These two are pretty tricky opponents, and I really need to take a moment to explain why. Morty's team consists of four members, Ghastly, two Haunters, and a Gengar. Among these Pokemon, the Ghastly and one of the Haunters knows the move Curse. And on my rival's team, he starts off with a Haunter that also knows it. When this move is used against an opponent, it will cause them to lose a quarter of their maximum HP every turn. However, it will not activate on a turn where an opponent is knocked out. This is likely to prevent the player from running out of Pokemon at the same time as the other trainer, as that situation always counts as a loss for the player. In both of these battles, during my first turn of transforming, I'd no doubt be cursed and have to suffer the damage for the rest of the battle, which makes things near impossible. By now, the game expects a normal player to be using a handful of different Pokémon. Curse is very much a problem if you're dumb enough to do some kind of self-imposed single Pokémon challenge. I should also mention, Morty's last Pokémon is a Gengar that knows Shadow Ball. So even if I manage to make it that far into the battle with Transform, that'll no doubt finish me. Like I said, I trained as much as I could beforehand, in order to keep Ditto's HP as high as possible to try and last through both the curse and recoil damage. If Ditto has problems struggling when it's overleveled, then I'll just have to make it even more overleveled. I found that fighting Wild Stantler was a pretty efficient method to keep getting the EXP, though for some reason they only show up in Crystal version at night. By this point, my rival isn't too much to worry about, and the blob of goo hits him like a storm. Although it still annoys me that his Bayleaf still doesn't go down in one hit. Just goes to show how little Ditto's stats actually increase with every level up. Because Morty specializes in the Ghost type, I want to go in with a struggling normal type Ditto, as it will be completely immune to the majority of his team's offensive options. I also intentionally picked up and saved the Goldberry specifically for this battle. And I'm sure by now you're wondering why my Ditto is paralyzed. This is to prevent his Gengar from putting me to sleep with Hypnosis and then using Dream Eater, which is the only other thing it can do, since Shadow Ball does not affect a normal type like Ditto. With this setup, Morty's strongest Pokémon has become his weakest, and I can easily overpower the rest of his team. I was even lucky with the amount of times I lost a turn due to paralysis, so I didn't end up consuming my Goldberry too. With the fourth badge claimed, I can head right to the next one. The Pokémon in Chuck's gym are fighting type, however all I need here is the Pink Bow again. His first Pokémon Primeape knows Rage, and once I use it, I just get him to hit me with Fury Swipes and my attack stat gets boosted by quite a bit. However, his Polyrath can still make things annoying. This thing always manages to land a Hypnosis and Dynamic Punch on me. It's just a matter of getting through his stall tactics. Next is Jasmine. Initially, I went into this one trying to use Transform, which at first seemed pretty doable. Sure, her Magnemite's electric moves may not work on her strongest Pokémon, but Magnemite is fragile enough that I can use it against them, despite it not being very effective. But her Steelix is still a real problem. At first, I was extremely worried that it would know Earthquake, but it turns out it doesn't even have a Ground-type move. No, the strongest option it has against me is Iron Tail, which Magnemite can resist by quite a bit. The strategy I was going for here was to confuse it with Supersonic while hitting it with Sonic Boom. This idea was working, however she has a Hyper Potion save just for Steelix. I don't have enough PP to bring its health down for a second time, and I'm quickly forced to sit there wasting my electric moves while it finishes Ditto off. So next I tried going in with Struggle. Like I said, her Magnemite are weak, so they both go down in one hit. However, even at this level, Ditto just barely puts a dent in Steelix's health bar. I was able to win, but only because I had saved that Goldberry from earlier, 
Otherwise, I would have had to really go and grind again. Before I can enter the next gym, I first need to go through Team Rocket's hideout. There isn't anything special in terms of difficulty about this part. I think we can all agree that no matter what Pokemon you're using, Rocket Grunts aren't a challenge. They're just a handful of tedious battles you have to get through. One notable thing here, though, is this scientist right here. You see, his only Pokemon is also a Ditto. Because my Ditto is at a much higher level, it always goes first, causing it to transform into his Ditto. But then when his Ditto tries to transform into mine, it fails because you cannot transform into a transformed Pokemon, even when it's transformed into the same Pokemon that it was before it transformed. So what ends up happening is that my Ditto transforms every turn, causing Transform's PP to always be reset to 5. And because the transform of his Ditto is failing, he slowly loses his PP until he is forced to struggle me to death. So for this battle, I'm pretty much forced to sit there until I'm defeated by my own stupid strategy. Luckily, this character is completely unnecessary to battle, and you can just walk around him. And even if I couldn't, I could just go and beat him with struggle from the get-go anyway. The next gym leader is Price. He's also a pretty annoying fight. His first Pokemon is Seal, and his second one, Dugong, knows the exact same moves. As I'm sure you can guess, these two like to spam rest as much as possible. This forces me to sit around wasting all of my moves until I can struggle, and nothing I have does much damage to them. And even then, I have to hope for a critical hit for it to be possible to take down Dugong. I do manage to get to his Peloswine, but unsurprisingly lose. Also unsurprisingly, I go back and just get Ditto to struggle through the whole battle. By this point, it's apparent that this is often the best strategy, which is actually also kind of disappointing. For this run, I was hoping to be able to use Ditto's unique gimmick a lot more, but the further I go, the more I'm realizing just how much Gen 2 really babies the player. Compared to Gen 1, the majority of enemy Pokémon in this game have a really underwhelming assortment of moves. Most of the time when I use Transform, it's preferable to waste most of my moves as Struggle is a better offensive option than anything else the opponent has available. And yeah, obviously I'm playing the game in a very stupid and unintended way, but I was hoping that by, you know, the seventh gym, the other trainers would be able to use more than just headbutt and weak elemental attacks. Remember Jasmine Steelix? That thing even knows Sunny Day, a move that does nothing for her team but boosts the power of the moves they're weak against. Because apparently the devs thought starting with Cyndaquil wasn't already easy enough. While working on this video, I found out that a lot of Pokémon in this game have much more variety with their known moves in the Heart Gold and Soul Silver remakes. There have honestly been quite a few moments where I wish I was playing one of those games instead just for that reason alone. Anyway, the rant's over and the next battle is against Silver. For this one, I use a Paralyzed Curberry to stop his Magnemite from hitting me with Thunder Wave. His Haunter is faster than his Golbat, so it's always going to hit me with Curse. After a few attempts, I managed to just scrape by with Transform, making sure to conserve some wing attacks for his Meganium at the end. And now after taking care of the rest of the Rocket Grunts and saving the Radio Tower, it's time to go beat up Claire's Pokémon. Her team has three Dragonair, all of which will do whatever they can to paralyze you. Luckily, by going in with the Paralyzed Cure Berry, I can help prevent this. And once I'm transformed, each of them go down with a single Dragon Breath. Once her Kingdra comes out, I have more than enough at my disposal to deal with it. With eight badges collected, it's finally time to head to the Pokémon League. But before that, at the end of Victory Road, my rival shows up for one more battle. His lead Pokémon is Sneasel, which is more or less a throwaway team member for him, so I don't even bother trying to win with it. The only real problems that his team can give is that his Golbat uses Confuse Ray and his Magneton has Thunder Wave. Using a Berry to hold off either of these status conditions is all I need. But yet again, despite being absurdly overleveled, I can apparently only just scrape by with this tactic. One of the biggest challenges of the game is just up ahead, but before I even consider attempting it, I decide that now is a good time to grind Ditto up to the max level, and also go back and gather any other held items that I might find useful. The first member of the Elite Four is Will, the Psychic-type trainer. This is another frustrating one. Both of his Zatu know Confuse Ray, and believe me, they will go for it if they can. Because I have to spend a turn transforming, I'm guaranteed to have to start the battle while confused, meaning that it's hard to even retaliate with the same attack. Sure, I could use a Bitter Berry to stop it the first time, but there's little point. It would only cure Ditto once, and then the berry is consumed upon use. I'd just be wasting all of the ones I have in my attempts to beat him. Remember when I said that the remakes gave opponents a better variety of moves? 
Well, the Elite Four are probably one of the biggest examples of this change. In Gen 2, both of Will Zatu are identical, knowing Quick Attack, Future Sight, Confuse Ray, and Psychic. In the Gen 4 games, they're both different, with his first Zatu knowing U-Turn, Me First, Confuse Ray, and Psychic. As it stands, trying to win while transformed is all up to luck. It's just turn after turn of hoping you don't take confusion damage and that his Pokemon do. His Jinx is also especially dangerous, as it will always either hit you hard with Ice Punch or put you to sleep first. It's doable, but you're at the mercy of the game's RNG the whole time. So unsurprisingly, I go for Struggle instead. Because he's only the first member, I don't bother wasting my Bitter Berries right away. All of his Pokemon know Psychic, the strongest move for the type at the time, so it's no surprise that the damage against me builds up easily. But assuming that I can avoid dealing with confusion for enough turns, I can once again get by his whole party with Struggle. Sadly though, it looks like the same strategy has to be done for the rest of the Elite Four as well. Why you ask? Well, because for all three of them, their first Pokemon happened to be so awful, it's not even funny. Koga has an Ariados that knows Spiderweb, Baton Pass, Giga Drain, and Double Team. Sure, this Pokemon's typing may make it immune to being poisoned, but once again, it's all up to luck. You would pretty much just have to hope that those five Double Teams make you dodge attacks long enough to struggle his team to death. Getting the opportunity to do that is also pretty hard, as you'll have to waste all of the PP of Ariados' terrible moves first. And at that point, you might as well just simplify things by letting Ditto do the struggling itself. For this one, I give Ditto a Poison Cure Berry. Most of his Pokémon will try and poison me with Toxic, so it's crucial that that doesn't happen early on. Another problem is his Fortress, which knows Explosion. If that hits me, it's doubtful that I'll have enough HP to struggle through the rest of the battle. Although it's not a sure thing, I can still take him down this way, maybe even a little bit easier than Will. Bruno just makes me sad. His first Pokémon is a Hitmontop, who for some reason doesn't know an offensive fighting type move in this generation. W why? I give it the Soft Sand so that its strongest move, Dig, can hopefully be useful. Using Hitmontop instead of Ditto isn't actually the worst thing in the world. However, as I learned with the next battle, going through this one with Struggle is pretty mandatory. You'll see why in a second. Karen is the last member of the Elite Four, and her first Pokémon might just be the worst one of all. Her Umbreon knows Faint Attack, Confuse Ray, Mean Look, and Sand Attack. Yet again, you can't make it through this battle with Transform without the odds happening to swing in your favor. I don't even try. Her Vile Plume will always try to paralyze you with Stun Spore, and her Gengar knows both Curse and Destiny Bond. And as if that wasn't enough, the only thing Umbreon could really do is confuse the opponent and lower their accuracy. Both of which can hardly be called consistent strategies. Especially when you're likely to run out of faint attacks before her first Pokémon even goes down. Again, I know I have no one to blame but myself for the ridiculous rules I'm playing by, but it's still kind of a shame to see how underwhelming the Elite Four are compared to the last video. Obviously, since Struggle is the way to go, and Transform's PP can only be restored between battles by 5 or 10 at a time, I have no choice but to defeat all of the previous members this way in order to be able to use Struggle against Karen. But now the question remains, how will I approach the battle against Lance? Lance is someone that I thought I could use Transform against. His Gyarados has access to really good moves, and with the help of the Pink Bow, his Hyper Beam would be insanely good. However, this is completely crippled by one very unfortunate thing. You see, his Gyarados will always use Rain Dance. While that may be something that is usually good for a Water type, the issue is that one of his Dragonite knows Thunder. And he will always, and I mean always, send that one out as his second Pokémon in this battle. All it takes is one hit from that, and my Transform Ditto is knocked out. If there was one fight I was hoping I could avoid using Struggle, it's this one. Lance has a full party of strong Pokémon, including three bulky Dragonite. In order for me to possibly make it through this battle, I have no choice but to hope everything goes my way. I need some of his Hyper Beams to miss me, and I need to land critical hits at crucial moments. I spent many, many attempts on this battle, hoping to get the results I wanted. A few times I came close, taking his final Dragonite down to just a shred of health. Discouraging? Yes, but that only made it clear to me that this was indeed possible to do. Later on, I got even closer, knocking out both of us at the same time, but that still counts as a loss for me. But after so much more attempts, I finally managed to do it, proving that Ditto can indeed conquer the Johto region. 
With all of the suffering over, I can now relax and do something else with my time. Or at least I wish I could. I think we all know that there is someone else I have to try to defeat before I can say this is over. But before I can get there, I need to take care of another eight battles first. The moment I arrive in Kanto, the first thing I do is head to Celadon City. If you thought Struggle was overpowered before, it's about to get even better now that I have the leftovers. The Kanto gems are pretty underwhelming in this game. Even if I didn't now have the leftovers to restore some HP every turn, most of them are ridiculously easy to plow through with Struggle. For those unaware, the Kanto gems are known for being pretty underleveled in this game. I guess Game Freak must have realized how easy they were too, because they were all made to be a bit stronger in the remakes. There isn't really much to say about what I'm doing at this point. Since seven of them only have three or four Pokémon, they're barely a step above most of the regular NPC trainers you see throughout the game. Most of them don't even take me below half health by the end. The one exception, though, is the final gym leader, Blue. He has a full party of six Pokémon, stronger than Lance, with his levels being in the mid-50s. With that in mind, I'm doubtful that Ditto can struggle through this one, so I try to use Transform. However, that would turn out to yet again be a bad idea. A major problem on his team is his Rhydon, who can one-shot me with Rock Slide. His Pidgeot also doesn't have the moves to properly deal with this. But that's not even the worst of it. As I'm sure some of you remember, I've used Blue's Pidgeot against him before. But this time, something weird is going on. For some reason, Mirror Move will not work for me. I'm not exaggerating either. In the insane amount of time I spent attempting this fight, it failed 100% of the time. There is just no way that's a coincidence. I'm convinced that Ditto using it while transformed is causing some kind of glitch to happen. So I guess the glitches of transform haven't been completely fixed after all. Last time the game took away my ability to struggle, this time it's crippling my ability to transform. So with Pidgeot already giving me a clear disadvantage, I also have to deal with the fact that one of my moves is now a dead slot. Once again, I have no choice but to try struggle with Ditto, hoping that all the stars align and my dumb luck prevails. Let me tell you, this battle took even longer than Lance, and it requires more specific things to occur. One of the things I quickly realize is that a critical hit on his Alakazam is mandatory. If that thing doesn't go down in one move, it'll either hit hard with Psychic or use Reflect, both of which are things that I cannot afford to have happen so early on in the battle. This is also necessary for his last Pokémon, Arcanine too. Otherwise, he'll just heal it with a full restore. So after an eternity, I finally did it. I nearly had a heart attack watching the final amount of recoil damage happen too. Now you all know what's next. I'm headed to Mount Silver to take on Red. This is the final battle in the game, and there is a huge jump in levels for his party. Struggling is almost out of the question, as all of their stats far exceed that of a level 100 ditto. I go in with leftovers again, hoping to make little Pikachu survive and do the whole thing by itself. Earlier in this video I mentioned the light ball, and why it wouldn't work if I gave it to ditto for the battle. I should also mention that a common misconception is that people think that Red's Pikachu is holding a light ball in this game. This is only true in the DS remakes, so this Pikachu here isn't nearly as dangerous. And this is how the challenge ends. Having to battle some of the most powerful Pokémon in the game, at the highest levels in the game, while stuck using the power of one of the most fragile. It's like a cruel joke after all I've gone through. I'm sure you might be thinking though, well at least Charizard and Blastoise will go down easy, right? Wrong. I'm not sure if it's because he's taking Pikachu's type into account, but he will always send out those two Pokémon last. And by then, there is zero chance you'll have any PP left for your moves. Not that it matters, as even when I get as far as his Venusaur, a single Solar Beam will destroy me. A lot of the major battles throughout this game have required me simply hoping for the right things to happen at the right time. But Red takes it to the absolute extreme. To give a demonstration of how insanely impossible this is, I'm going to cheat for a moment to show you a near-perfect battle. In order for me to take down his Venusaur, from the beginning of the battle, every electric move I use has to hit, paralyze, and land as a critical. And afterwards, all of his Pokémon must always lose their turn to paralysis. I don't think I need to tell you that such a thing occurring is near on impossible and cannot be realistically expected. But hypothetically, if I were to ever end up in such a position, and Red is down to his last two Pokémon, I still couldn't win the battle. 
Even with every move I use dealing the maximum amount of damage, there is no way to still have any Electric-type attacks left for Charizard and Blastoise. Struggle barely puts a dent into Charizard, critical or not, and he can just obliterate me from full health with a single flamethrower, which also doesn't even have to be a critical hit. Struggling with Ditto just won't work. His Pokemon are just too powerful, and in this case I don't even have a way to paralyze him either, so I'd be taking even more damage throughout the battle than if I transformed, even with getting the most optimal results every turn. To conclude, the only way I can possibly win is by spamming full restores the whole time. Not exactly what I'd call an impressive method, but it's also the only one. So I suppose by my own rules, I can't do it. In this video, I set out to see if Pokemon Crystal could be beaten by using just a ditto. Did I accomplish that? I mean, beating Lance also rolls the credits, doesn't it? So could you say that I already proved it at that point? Is all of Kanto the real end of the game, or should it be considered a bonus? I'm not really sure, but I don't think it matters anymore. I've played through enough of the game, and I think I'll leave that stuff up to you guys. My name is Picaspre, and thanks for watching.